I know that this video is not going to be watched by a great many people, but if you're watching it, you're one of those who's actually interested in our music and what we've got to say. Welcome, you are our people. The reason I'm making this video today is I'm a bit tired and a bit despondent about the amount of effort that Louis and I are putting into creating and promoting our music and the very little reaction we're getting. I just want to kind of think through what we're about, where we've come from and where we're likely to be going in the near future musically. I need to reframe and kind of restate our, our musical vision for my own benefit, but um, hopefully it'll be of interest to you guys as well. We are aware that we are what we call genre fluid. We make music that is defiant of music industry tropes and genres and ways of doing things. And we understand that that can make it difficult for marketing and we can make it difficult for our own fans and followers. I've been making and releasing music since the late 80s and Louis joined me in the 90s. Like everyone, we've grown up listening to lots of different types of music over the years. Your tastes develop and change as you get older and also new things come out that catch your imagination. Louis and I both grew up listening to different types of rock music, generally at the heavier end or the progressive rock end. I heard a lot of music in my teens and early 20s. I had no idea it was progressive rock. It was just music that I found in the local public library or heard on the radio or whatever. In the 90s, both of us discovered electronica and dance music of various kinds. I don't think either of us were ever really into your mainstream house, but both of us got into aspects of techno. But the thing that really caught our imagination quite early on was, I think, would it have been the mid-90s, the Asian underground scene. Growing up, I'd listened to a lot of folk music, which kind of overlapped with progressive rock. That led me into hearing so-called world music, music from different parts of the world. Uh, I discovered the music of the Indian subcontinent some point back then. In I introduced Louis to that. In the years gone by, Louis had more of an interest in that, and I've had more of an interest in music from the Arabic and Persian worlds and cultures. But what that meant was that when Electronica came along, Louis and I were both very, very much into the so-called Asian underground scene, which was actually broader than just Asian, but there was amazing music, a bunch of great people who were still friends with a lot of them, and a lot of them are still making music. A common thread for me all the way through, right from my early days of listening to progressive rock and folk rock, and then going into various forms of, of world music, hate that term anyway at every point what i've been drawn to is elements of medieval music because it kind of existed in all of those little hints of it or references to it or musicians themselves trying to capture that kind of vibe i mentioned that my interest was more in the Arab end of things, but that of course overlaps immensely with European medieval music. A lot of the instruments are either the same or very similar, a lot of the sounds are quite similar. And with both South Asian music and Middle Eastern music and Central Asian music, although I like all the traditional original sounds, what I've always been drawn to is where those things have collided with the modern world and the sounds of modern production and electronica have merged with those things. The Asian underground scene was great. That was where our interest in South Asian music suddenly hit our world of our life in London because it merged in with drum and bass and then later on it collided with dubstep. But at every point of our musical career there has just been this little influence of medieval music. Some of the early secret archives of the Vatican cassettes had actual medieval tunes on them done very badly in our way. We just didn't have the musical skills or technology at that point to kind of create what we really wanted to do. However, we still loved it. A couple of years ago, I discovered 
the so-called Viking, neo-folk, dark folk music traditions of northern and north eastern Europe. A lot of music coming out of Scandinavia, Iceland, the Germanic countries historically. Bands like Vardruna, Heilung, Danheim, Fondom, and so on. Lots of them. Which I'd, for some reason, kind of ignored before. I knew they existed, but I didn't connect. And then somehow I did. And there came a point where I actually understood that music. I grasped what these people were doing. And suddenly, here was a way to connect medievally sounding things with modern production and modern ways of doing things. Now, a lot of that music is actually harking back to pre-medieval times, so-called Dark Ages, Vendel period, Scandinavia. Heilung in particular tried to get back to kind of Neolithic, Bronze Age, Iron Age tropes. Aina Selvik of Wadruna is very interested in that. But I think his involvement with TV programmes such as Vikings has kind of got their music labelled as kind of Viking, but I think his interest is actually in something older. So we've been making music that dips into those things, but what I have found over this last few months is that everything I'm writing, where I try to get to that kind of sound, it catches a bit of it, but it keeps ending up sounding a bit more medieval than pre-medieval. So fine, I can live with that. It is honest to who I am and what Secret Archives of the Vatican has been. I'm not a video gamer, but what I've come across this last few months um, is a bunch of artists, mostly on YouTube, who have been doing covers of a lot of the soundtrack songs and pieces of music from a whole stack of fantasy-based video games and some of it is absolutely amazing and once again it is just connecting up something that's modern and part of this digital age with something that is rooted in medieval sounds and instruments. I was briefly interested in bardcore where people were doing covers of modern mainstream pop and rock songs but in a medieval style now most of that has turned out to be absolute garbage i think that was a kind of a musical dead end i don't think it's led to anything very creative however the people doing game music covers have been doing some stunning work very very inspirational it also works very much for the online world it's videos short tracks designed for youtube and instagram and outlets like that Louis and I both grew up watching and listening to and playing games based in fantasy, Tolkien, and so on. So the kind of hashtags I've been using in a lot of uh, media work for recent tunes has been related to fantasy and Tolkien and so on. I'm starting to use terms like neo-medieval along with Dark Age music trying to come up with some way to kind of capture the sounds that we're making at the moment. The sounds we're making at the moment are primarily acoustic, either actually played on our own instruments here or using virtual sample libraries, but they are of genuine medieval or dark age period instruments. And I've started to bring in a little bit of the electronica that is our historical roots. There's little bits of dubstep, little bits of drum and bass. We're having fun also at the moment doing one minute tracks which are released only on Instagram and TikTok and so on. Because once again this gives us a chance to just play with some sounds and, and see where it takes us. But they're kind of quick and easy releases. I can create some of these tunes in a few hours and then they're out and, we'll, and you know we're seeing how people react to it. But I'm really happy with where it's going. We still love all the previous things we've done. We still actually like our progressive rock. We love all our Asian underground sound, our dub, 
our dubstep, our drum and bass. And I think we're going to be increasingly bringing that into this nameless genre, which has got a big medieval and fantasy element. And I think I'm going to try targeting a lot of the fantasy role-playing game type playlists on Spotify and see if I can get some of those people to add us to their playlists because I think a lot of the stuff we're doing now works really well in that context. We've also always had a very strong visual element to what we do. Our cover art and individual track art has always been a lot of fun to create and very much kind of reveals where we're coming from and what our interests are. And I think it's part of what hopefully brings people in to have interest in what we're doing. And this whole neo-medieval Dark Age music thing totally lends itself to that. It gives us infinite scope for creating videos and cover art. Real challenge with videos, every piece of music you do these days needs videos because that's the way you put it online. Most sites are now video based. And that is a challenge. But once again, I'm pretty happy with what we've been doing lately. I think we're managing to capture some of that. And hopefully that is also part of what's making things interesting for people. Anyway, we have a lot of tracks in the pipeline. We've got a bunch of tunes recorded. Um, I'm recording this in late October 2021. I've got a bunch of singles coming out between now and Christmas 2021. And then there's going to be an album released early in 2022, which will have those tracks, but also a few that won't be released until they're on that album. So hopefully you'll listen to that, add it to your playlist, download it, whatever it is you do with your music. In the meantime, it would be great if you would click the thumbs up button, follow us, leave comments on our various social media, that really helps. Most of the algorithms that run these things will only show what we do to people if they're seeing that people are commenting, watching things all the way through, giving the thumbs up and so on. We really appreciate it because it helps us um, and hopefully we're giving something of value to you as well. So thanks for watching this long-winded personal ramble and I'll talk to you again soon. Thank you.